And it's red. Hmm. Yeah, another one. Even though I'm getting tired. I don't know why I'm tired. It's only a seven year eighteen. <laughs> 718, 718, 718. Let me think here. Um, Facebook. I don't know where they came up with this poking thing, but I've got about 15 people. Poke, 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 poke. All day long. There goes my kitty. <laughs> my little sunshine. I've had him since he was a baby. He's 11 now. Anyways, the poking, it's got to stop. It is driving me crazy. Crazy. Can't stand it anymore. I don't have the heart to tell people to quit poking me. You try and ignore it, but it's there. It's there. You know, you look for people's birthdays so you can wish them happy birthday. You know, you're like, you know, it's poking again. More pokes. And if you don't poke back, it's kind of rude. I don't like being rude. You know, now they have this little thing on it that says, <laughs> uh, so and so poked you a year ago. I don't know where you find it. I don't know how to work that stupid site either. Most of it. I don't like to do things on that site because it carries viruses. And I have a video on there that says uh, something about computer crashing not for kids. And I'm pissed so uh, I don't want my computer to crash again. And I still have the uh, total protection <laughs> that rhymes with uh, McFuck the so if you can figure that out you'll know which uh, brand of uh, protection I have anyways uh, the poking's got to stop I hope some of them I quit posting my uh, videos on Facebook because nobody was watching them it's like you know yeah fuck y'all too anyways um, yeah, the poking, it's got to stop, because I'm going to go insane, I'm going to, they, they even post up, um, events, national poke the shit out of everybody day, and I'm like, isn't poking everybody every day, 50,000 times a day, enough, the poking's got to stop. That's my message. Stop the poking. Go play a game. Me personally, I like to play the slots. I actually do, you know, really miss uh, going to a casino in Oklahoma every blue moon with $20. Uh, one time I put a dollar bill in and hell, that thing hit so many times. Uh, I got like $336 off of $1. I was like, cash out. I'm out of here. Gone. <laughs> I missed the slots, but uh, I'll live. Anyways, yeah, the poking's got to stop. I had something else to talk about too, and now it's gone. I must be getting tired. There, where'd you go, son? There you are. Come here and say hello to the world. <laughs> here he is. He doesn't like being on camera. You better say hello. Say hello. Oh, and do the duck lips. <laughs> God, if I ever do that, you had better tell me, Steve. If I ever do that. I don't think I've ever done that, but if I ever do that, you better tell me. Okay? Duck lips, not good. Anyways, let me put the sun down. No on. Go play. Don't get behind my wires. You know better than that. Shoot. Yeah, I had something else. I'm trying to figure out what the hell it was. Poking. Uh, get out of there. Shoe. The wires. God, he doesn't listen. Does anybody else out, out 
a cat that just has to go underneath your computer wires and get all tangled up, fuck your shit up. <laughs> that would be my son. He's pissed. He wants attention, but he'll get it later. We sit up and watch TV together. Yes, we do. Um, let's see. Uh, shit, what was it? It was, oh, oh, another blast from the past. Yeah, I was working at that same gas station one Thanksgiving. It was dead, rainy. Nobody was in the store. I was working. Um, bored. Fresh coffee made all the time for anybody that came into the old inconvenient mart. And um, this dude's coming up in a hoodie, jeans down to his knees, you know, looking all, I guess, I don't know, thuggy, whatever the hell you call it. And he comes into the store, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, hey, how are you doing? I'm thinking potential company, and because uh, I love to blab. And he stopped dead, and he said, you ain't afraid of me? And I said, uh, should I be? What's going to happen? Whatever's going to happen is going to happen, so fuck it, you know. What, you want the money out of the register? I can't open the safe. It's cast iron. I busted my knees on it a million times, and that shit didn't open it. You know, I walk kind of fast, so, you know, I don't look down when I walk, so, you know, I'm going to have bad kneecaps when I get old. But, uh, you know, what is it you want? He said, I can't believe you're not afraid of me. I said, I ain't afraid of shit. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You going to rob the place? What are you going to do? You want to hang out and have some company? Stay out of the rain? What are you doing? What are you doing walking around on Thanksgiving all by yourself? You want to rob the place or uh, you want me to go back there and turn that camera off and uh, free coffee, free stale donuts? This place is inconvenient. You know, half the shit in here is uh, basically unedible. So, for... The last six hours of my shift, we laughed our asses off. I swear to God, every comedian we talked about and laughed, imitated, laughed. You name it, we did it. It was so fucking hilarious. He told me where the improv place was in Raleigh. I was still too chicken to go. I had a lot of people tell me I should head on out there and you know, even one of the news crews, people was like, what the hell are you doing in here? You don't need to be here. You need to be out and like, you know, stand up comedian or whatever. And I just told him, I'm still plucking feathers. Yeah. And he's like, well, I don't understand that because you're sitting here doing it in front of all of us. And I said, well, that's all of y'all. If I get on the stage, I'm going to be like a deer in headlights. Freeze up. You know, and I even thought of doing a video on here. <laughs> Have a little table, have a fake joint, <clears throat> glass of wine, bottle of pills. Most comedians come out, and before they do, they've had one of those items. Chills them out, gets rid of the fear. I'm just not into that, you know. Go out there all day natural, you know. Just get your shit going, and once you start talking, you can't shut up, you know. And, uh... They just couldn't believe that I could sit there and do it in front of a whole bunch of strangers. I used to bring customers in there. They'd go tell their friends. They'd go tell their friends. They'd go tell their friends. And everybody would show up just for the fun, you know. And I come from two different worlds. I really do. You know, I ain't afraid to say it. My mom was homeless. I grew up watching that. And I'd sneak and tell my dad she had a place to stay, so I'd go stay with her. We'd stay in the streets, and I'd get to know people, you know. And uh, then I lived with my dad, who... Uh, made a lot of money and was a total complete asshole and um, you know I was drilled at the dinner table by my ex-stepmom who was, went to Oxford, she was from England and you had to have the proper grammar and say this right and say that right and we grew up around big words so you know I could have a conversation with anybody about anything so I knew how to talk to anybody from any walk of life and uh, so anybody that came in those gas stations, we had a conversation. And it was for real. And it was fun. So, uh, you know, that's just who I am. I can talk to anybody. And uh, 
everybody always just thought that was great, you know. Anybody that came in there, I had their stuff ready for them. Uh, blunts, rolling papers, whatever they did. You know, what was really fun was the uh, the computer people, IBMers that came in there and they'd come up to the counter and act like, hmm, what did they want? Did they want the 1.5s or the whatever else there was? I don't remember. Um, and I was just dead looking at them like, uh, are you shitting me? Do you think standing there acting like you don't know what kind of rolling paper you're going to try and push it past me that you're buying this shit for somebody else when you come in here once a week and buy some rolling papers and I see you through the cameras drive your little Mercedes around the back of the store and roll up that fat ass joint smoke it go back to IBM and work your little computer shit you think I don't know about you and I tell them <laughs> I tell them just Zippos, what it just get your shit and get out of my face. I know it's for you. Stop playing games. Get out, just go. You make me sick. Go. And the people that were real, I have their shit ready for them. Flavored, non flavored. Some would want cigars, the empty kind you could buy. Some would want the flavored cigars with the flavored tobacco. They take some out, put shit in there. Some won't come for their 40s. I'd run back there. I knew when they'd be there, what time. It's usually pretty late, you know, and they'd uh, show up at a specific time. There should be on the counter. They'd pay for it and go. You know, and then you had your business people come in, and I'd have their transactions already ready for them. All they'd have to do is give me the card, we finish it up, and they would be ready to go. And, uh, you know, just all kinds of scenarios. It was great. It was real fun. So, you know, but me and that one guy, we had the best Thanksgiving just laughing. Just laughing and cracking up. I mean, you hit the floor. You just, you couldn't catch your breath. You were laughing so hard. So, that's just another black blast from the past. Lots of good times. And being real with people. That's the only way to be. If you can't be real, shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> That's the end of another one. I might think of another one or I might quit for tonight. I don't know yet. May have some more for tomorrow. Don't know yet. Talk to you soon. Bye.